Live from Juba, on air and online. This is iRadio News. Hello, this is I Radio Afternoon News first here are the headlines. The landlord of the South Sudan Anti-Corruption Commission has locked the building after the institution failed to pay more than £7 million pounds rent fee. Authorities of Ring Administrative Area say two senior officers who were convicted last year for cutting off the arms of an 18-year-old man have escaped from Pariang Prison. And the central bank governor has advised urban South Sudanese to start eating local foods as alternatives to their expensive bread. These stories and more coming to you in this news bulletin with me, Helen Samuel. Now the news in detail. Authorities of Rang Administrative Area say two senior officers who were convicted. Excuse me, that's the second story. Let me go to the very first story. The landlord of South Sudan Anti-Corruption Commission has locked the building after the institution failed to pay more than £7 million rent fee. This is according to Jeremiah Atel, the executive director of the Anti-Corruption Commission. He disclosed that the institution has not paid the property owner £7 million pounds accrued from one year of non-payment. Atel says... To their dismay, the staff found the entire premises was locked, including the gates. Atel says the decision by the angry landlord came a month after he filed a court case over the non-payment. He is now calling on the Ministry of Finance to release the rental so that their staff resume work. He spoke to I Radio this morning. We did not pay the rent for a period of one year. So the landlord came in and then locked the main door of our office this morning around 8. So we are now sitting outside. It is not us who pay the rent, it's finance who pay the rent. So we requested the payment, we processed everything, the contract, everything was sent there. It was approved and it was not paid. So we don't know why they did not pay. So we pull it up so they tell us tomorrow we'll be paid next week, thing like that. So we don't know why they did not pay. We didn't pay for one year, which is $7,200,000. Yeah, we are just sitting outside, everything is inside, so we cannot work. So we just come to the compound and we are just sitting. I think we've got the office is locked down. They lock it when we are over there. The South Sudan Interim Constitution mandates the Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate cases of corruption in the public as well as in the private sector and to combat administrative malpractices in public institutions. Authorities of Rang Administrative Area say two senior officers who were convicted last year for cutting off the arms of a 19-year-old man have escaped from Pariang Prison. Brigadier General Alak Yai Gwen and Ma Major Mongkwang Makol Miakol, both SPLAIO generals, were handed a seven-year jail term for the crime. General Alak Yai Gwen ordered his colleague Major Miakol to arrest then Mayik Miniel over a missing phone. Miniel then detained the teenager in a container, tortured him overnight and amputated his arms. Apart from the jail terms, the two generals were fined 24 cows in reparation to the victim. Martin Bithngor, the area information minister, told iRadio, the convict disappeared from the Parian prisons on Saturday. He said the authorities are investigating how that happened. Well, I just heard this one recently on 
Saturday, and right now we are following the case. How was those people released? I heard that they are released, but uh, which way? What mechanism were they used for releasing them? So, yeah, I still follow the case how, but the, the, the compensation has been paid. 24 cow has been paid to have the compensation for the arms that have been called but uh, how they were sentenced for seven years in jail, but I don't know how those people are released. Okay? Anyway, we are still calling because we do not get accurate information that we can tell you. Uh, that, that no, they are safe, they are released, they are kept, that no, they are uh, just saying the youth. But I want to meet the, the, the Christian leadership. Ngor said he is yet to meet with the leadership of the prison to get an account of the incident. The central bank governor has ad advised urban South Sudanese to start eating local foods as alternative to the expensive bread. Moses Makurdeng made the remarks at the weekend while explaining what caused the current depreciation of the pounds against the U.S. dollars. According to Makur, the war in Ukraine has been a major shock for global commodity in the markets. He, is, he did not explain the extent to which the invasion of Ukraine by Russian President Vladimir Putin is affecting South Sudan's economy. But in a press statement, Governor Makor said the country is not directly dependent on imports of grains from Ukraine and Russia. Amid these developments, he said the country continues to see rising prices of refined petroleum products and food items which are imported from the neighboring countries. His statement added that further inflation is expected in the coming months. Makor is now urging the citizens, particularly those accustomed to bread, to change their eating pattern and consume local produce. He explains. What is good for South Sudan is that the number of people who eat wheat, for example, something coming from wheat are really minimal. Because it is only those in towns who can eat bread and who can eat those things. But we are advising them also to change their pattern of consumption. Because uh, most of South Sudanese, they, they don't know even this wheat chicken case that. So you cannot jump to eat something you don't have. So you cannot jump to a geography against your uh, habits. That. So when things become tough, even if you are eating bread, relation, you can change the consumption pattern to what is available. So one of the solutions for the public of South Sudan is for people here actually to change their uh, consumption pattern. The governor said part of the commodity price hikes are because of imported inflation. Last Wednesday, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned that the Ukraine conflict may trigger social and economic chaos around the world. Guterres said this at the launch of a second report by the Global Crisis Response Group on Food, Energy and Finance over the Ukraine conflict. His statement partially reads, and I quote, for people around the world, the conflict together with other crises is threatening to unleash an unprecedented wave of hunger and destitution, leaving social and economic chaos in the wake. End quote. This news is coming to you from IE Radio. Police in Ringtown say the bull that was detained for allegedly killing a a 12-year-old boy and his owner have been bailed from custody. The incident occurred early this month. The bull named Mapur had returned from plowing a farm that evening hour when it attacked Makwer Mabor Magot in a neighborhood. Mapur and his owner, Mr. Kwei Montech Majak, were immediately detained after the incident. Elijah Mabor, the state police, Spokesperson said the, the suspects were bailed three days after the incident. Mabor says the decision was taken because the deceased family and the killer bull's owner are related and have agreed to settle the case at home. He narrated to I Radio what happened. The bull and the owner of, of the bull were bailed out. 
uh, going out uh, after uh, three days of the arrest. And uh, up to now, they are still uh, uh, at home, under bed, until the, 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 the funeral is, uh, is, is finalized. Then uh, uh, they will uh, attempt to solve the, 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 the issue. Uh, the bull is belong to the same family, and uh, the disease is also a family member. So, and uh, such cases are used to be solved uh, in a traditional way according to our culture here. So, it will be uh, after when uh, the funeral is finished, they will uh, try to settle the case at the family level. However, Elijah Mabor said that the case will be transferred to the two families after the funeral is done. According to the customary laws in Lex State, any domestic animal that killed a person, the family of the deceased shall be compensated for the loss. And finally, before the international news, at least 20 people volunteered to donate blood over the weekend as the country prepares to celebrate the World Blood Donor Day tomorrow. The donation at the South Sudan Bank Blood Bank followed a campaign organized by the Tawasul Charity Organization in Juba on Saturday. Those who spoke to iRadio say they did it to save lives. They are encouraging more people to turn up at the blood transfusion center in Juba and donate blood. This is what they had to say. بنحسس الناس إنه يتبرع بالدم لأنه كل ما أنت تتبرع بالدم كل ما أنت بتنغي شنو حياة الناس آه نحن اليوم هنا في بنك الدم جينا عشان نتبرع بالدم للمرضى الموجودين في المستشفى ومن هنا ندير رأس رسالة برضو للمجتمع ككل في داخل جوبا يا جماعة نحن الآن عندنا حالات يعني خطيرة جدا في داخل مستشفيات في جوبا هنا وهذه المستشفيات حالات كلها يحتاجوا لنقل الدم السريع Nani Kwan, who is the manager of the Blood Transmission Service Center situated adjacent to Juba Teaching Hospital, commended the volunteers who offered their blood. Uh, as we know, uh, the blood, the demand is really high in the hospitals, but they organized themselves and they came forward and donate blood. And by them coming today is a great initiative because uh, we will appreciate all the donors in World Blood Donor Day on June 14. Uh, which is upcoming uh, Tuesday. Normally, we know all the cultural belief uh, from the citizen, and they really do fear to come forward and donate blood. But uh, we will encourage them always to come forward and donate. Celebrated on the 14th of June each year, the day was created to raise global awareness of the need for safe blood and blood production transfusion. You are listening to iRadio News and now to the international scene brought to you by MTN. Freedom is everyone's desire. Freedom is what makes you and me happy. Freedom is called Korea in my country. My telecom network has chosen to give me.